let's go back to Russia, Ukraine, right? Yeah. And let's watch this montage that I made of the videos that you sent me, and we'll come back in two seconds. Just to put it bluntly, these are not refugees from Syria. These are refugees from uh, neighboring Ukraine. I mean, that, quite frankly, is part of it. These are um, Christians, they're whites, they're, um, they're very similar to people. I mean, people population. As you're talking to us, Matthew, we're playing in the latest pictures of some of the refugees trying to get on trains or trying to get out of Ukraine. And, and what's compelling is just looking at them, the way they're dressed. These are prosperous, I'm loath to use the expression, these are prosperous middle class people. These are not obviously refugees trying to get away from areas in the Middle East that are still in a big state of war. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any European family that you would live next door to. Fuck. Now the unthinkable has happened to them. And this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. It's Robert Moore here in, in the studio. Me, I'm sorry. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed. Children being killed every day with Putin's missiles and his helicopters and his rockets. And so, of course, I, I understand and respect the emotion. What you are outlining there is this tension between longer-term efforts to apply pressure to Vladimir Putin, such as financial se sanctions, and the very immediate military threat which you're experiencing. Isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European, I have to choose those words carefully too, uh, city where you wouldn't expect that or hope that it's going to happen. So it's partly human nature back. And Lana, I just wanted to clarify something I said yesterday um, in describing the conflict here. I spoke in a way that I regret. Uh, and for that, I'm sorry. What I'd hope to convey is that what's unique about the fighting underway here. These videos were, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I mean, the first guy that we watched who was just kind of saying, which one? you know, which one the is first that? guy is like, it's a relatively European country. Or the CBS really, guy. Yeah, the CBS. Yes. <laughs> he wasn't man. the worst. The worst guy was like, you know, I see the guys with blue eyes yeah. and blonde hairs. What the f Fuck. By the way, I mean, I don't know what most people think is good. like in your in Middle East. We have a lot of blonde haired people. We have a lot of red haired people. Oh, what a surprise. Yeah. We have a lot of people with bright eyes. So fuck you. I mean, the like, funny thing is the guy diverse. who was saying that. Secondly, like, like is brown color any like if you're brown colored hair or brown colored eyes that means you're automatically a refugee I mean, or a poor refugee the there, there also some confusion over like you know a refugee can be someone from a middle class above in fact they talked about a lot of people who managed to flee syria as a refugee i've heard I mean, this and not be stuck in the country they had to have some class. money yeah if uh, not the poor yeah. the poor people are either forced into the war or they're Basically, they can't leave because, yeah because I mean, they don't have the money to to you know pay this person that person and make the way so that's the, by I mean, the way the Al Jazeera guy he looked like he 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 was confused about the term refugee I mean just like, yeah. he like equated it with poor and then the guys last one the guy who said you know I'm really emotional you have uh European guys with blue eyes and stuff he himself now that you brought up Bashar Assad he looked just well, he, like Bashar Assad blue eyes. Maybe so. Yeah, does Bashar Assad has blue eyes? But he's like half English, eyes, no? Or his wife is only half no, he's English? Wife. No, no, no. He's white. No, he's he's a no. Syrians are very yeah. no, no, no. I know that light skin. Yeah. I mean, if you go to southern Iran, southwest of Iran, where Arabs live, you like majority of the Arab population of Iran are the lighter skin ones. Actually, I mean, a lot of people don't know that, but. That is, or I mean, Kurdistani that people matters. that everybody knows. Not yeah. that it matters. Not that any like who gives a shit about like yeah. fucking. But you know, anyway, and we're but, but, no, no. Let me say this though. It man, that mother. Uh, by the way, those like the French ones because one of them was a mm. French official. It really like I must say. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go full like fuck it. I'm gonna go uh, not 
like I'm going a slightly culturalist, but I've always, that's one of the reasons why I always loved Britain to an extent, maybe supported Brexit partially because of it, British culture and all that. But the, I mean, Europeans and a majority of these reports were from EU nations and to an extent Canadians. This is such, they are such a, the, their view of history is limited to the last hundred years, basically. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't know if they know this, but Baghdad was a major fucking, I mean, as you all know, Hariri would say, <laughs> was a ma- major metropolis when, you know, Paris was a village, was a, was a backward <laughs> nothing, you know? Uh, when Charlemagne, the great fucking European king who would unite Europe and was uh, was crowned the Holy, Holy Roman Emperor, when Charlemagne couldn't read or write Al-Mamun, the caliph of Abbasid Empire in Syria, in uh, D- Damascus, in Baghdad, in Iran, in, you know, he would move around. He, he was reading Plato and Socrates. So I don't know, I mean, your view of history is so limited and that makes them such pathetic little... Ugh. And you're speaking particularly about gov- government officials here. I mean, these were like, you know, these yeah, weren't, government these officials weren't civilians and, commenting. No, no, government, no, 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 government officials and journalists, mm-hmm. not civil. No, uh, man, I've talked to... Uh, I've had, I had loads of Polish friends because when I went to high school in UK, as you know, it was mostly like, you know, Eastern Europe, Polish mm. people and stuff. They, they, every, like they were extremely educated. Like everybody knew a lot of this. I, I don't know. These are, I don't know where they get. Man, I think the from. first few I days, genuinely though, don't know that the first people. few days of the media reporting here, they thought like, okay, this invasion happened. Wow. It's really good. We were right and all this. And then let's just say whatever we want now. I think they like, because all those clips, I think, are from like the first few days. No, but and you they know just, what like, these me off. Reporters, they just lost their minds. Like the shit that they're saying. Man, just keep that to yourself. Jeez. A- again, what pisses me off so much is that BBC Persia and Iran International, these are two channels that are anti-Iranian regime and are funded by Saudi Arabian government and British government. Okay. But they, man, first of all, by the way, congratulations to Ukrainian and Russian people. They are such educated people, man. There is so many Persian speakers in Ukraine and Russia. I had no idea. Like Mm -hmm. every day they would have Ukrainians and Russian people who are Persian speakers. They they don't have Persian parents or anything. They just learned Persian at university. And they spoke so well. They spoke fantastically well Persian. And they would have them on. And they, they were so, they would give such a sober analysis that, for example, the Ukrainians were like, yes, it's a very hard, uh, hard situation. Uh, we are obviously very upset about the attacks on the civilian centers. Uh, there should be negotiations among the governments of Ukraine and Russia. You, Russia should have never done this. This is way too much. But at the same time, of course, maybe there are some like uh, reasonable uh, uh, causes for what Russia did. You know what I mean? Like this is the debate. But then suddenly when it comes to CNN and BBC English, none of this. It's just like a fucking... Uh, good guy bad guy story yeah no uh definitely agree with you there and and i was just i I had a point that i wanted to make but i'll come back to that because this i want to just talk on those videos again this guardian article it just wrote a few quotes for some of these videos i mean one or two blow my mind one is this one this was maybe it's from the same person is this from the guardian article france yeah france's bmf tv this is a different one so maybe i haven't seen it journalist philippe cobet stated this about Ukraine. We're not talking here about Syrians fleeing the bombing of the Syrian regime backed by Putin. We're talking about Europeans leaving in cars that look like ours to save their lives. <laughs> the car, I mean, I don't know what kind of car they think that like people drive in the Middle East or so. I mean, the comments make no sense to ITV journalists. Now the unthinkable has happened to them. And this is not a developing third world nation. I looked at GDP and GDP per capita on Wikipedia for like around 2016. It's actually really ironic how Iraq is like literally right ahead or right after Ukraine around the the 50th um, nation in the world. So it's it's just insane. And then look at this one. Hold on, one more, one more. I just want to make one comment here that we've forgotten because we focused on the... I'm sorry, on the Middle Eastern one. 
But here, this is from Al Jazeera anchor. Looking at them, the way they're dressed, these are prosperous. I'm loath to use the expression middle class people. These are not obviously refugees looking to get away from areas in the Middle East that are still in a big state of war. What? I thought this was a big state of war here, but sure, I guess not. These are not people trying to get away from areas in North Africa. They look like any. I mean, this is just insane. And the Africa one we forgot. I mean, based on those videos that they're talking about, even at the borders where they're doing something really good, allowing in Poland and other countries for these refugees to come in from Ukraine, they're discriminating against um, Africans and others who are like, why, why are you even doing that? Why, what's way, the even way, point? I don't even get that. You're making your own life harder. According to all the reports, and I all the reports, I mean BBC, Persian reports, Iran International, like Persian is speaking word, English is speaking word, and Sputnik News RT from the first two days before they went uh, back out. Their racism according to all of these, was uh, coming from Ukrainian police against mm. black and darker skin people of Ukraine. Like, yeah, as you say, what's the <laughs> point? But, like, don't you even want at this point to fucking garner some international yeah. support, you exactly. dickheads? And it already like, backlashed uh, them, the African ones. I mean, not that African nations have, like, any kind of that much power in geopolitics no man but, you know, but, 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 thing, but they do right when it comes to voting and stuff apparently you no know, it's yeah. kind of being shown but yeah i mean you know no, they're but, not no my point is that you know ukrainians and other countries they're not disrespecting the most powerful nations out there so the backlash will be limited but i mean i mean i'm sorry why? but there is quite a significant number of black people in europe and america in iran yeah like so i think if a uh, I mean, as an Iranian, if a single black person is offended anywhere, I feel I'm offended. So uh, it was disgusting. No, I'm just These saying the governments Asia, aren't you know, I know, that I know. powerful in that way to receive sure, the sure, proper but... backlash that, that should be here in this case. I mean, yeah, you're sure. doing something right with the refugees, but I mean, sure, what's this discrimination? Whatever. Yeah, uh, but... But I would say BBC Persia and BBC Arabia have done really fantastic job on these covering on this and uh, Turkish media as well. Turks have done Man. A similar, yeah, uh, good coverage as this. Not that, by the way, I'm not. I just want to clarify that I'm not saying all of that. The the Ukrainian people who are being bombed and um, yeah, of course they should get the best treatment. But then, but they so do other refugees. And the hypocrisy of these people and the fact that they are so open about the yeah. hypocrisy, uh, it does make you in, it does make you frustrated. I'm For sorry. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, I really don't want this to be like misunderstood as something like, oh, now, po-, like I've like it's kind of like this idiotic idea that people like, you know, the older some older people that I had to work hard to get where I it, why don't you have to suffer? No, just like this idea that like just because a group suffered, the other group should yeah. suffer too. It's not, it's, it's idiotic. We are just saying that just, yeah, grow the fuck up.